Shalom, shalom. I am Pastor Juanita Weiss, and uh, Rabbi David's not with us today because we're going to be having a conversation <laughs> with some fellow collaborators um, of a new publication, and that's what we're going to be talking about. So I'm very, very excited about uh, our conversation today. Um, you know, every time I hear that song, um, Ashray, and thank you again, Rose Driver, I always want to salute you because it's so beautiful and um, always takes us to that place of Ashray, of this time of being, uh, this moment, you know, this season. And actually, it's a lifelong state that we can live in according to uh, Yeshua and because of what he's done, his, uh, his atoning work on that crucifixion stake, we get to live in this blessed state of Ashrei. And Ashrei, of course, it means fortunate. It means all the gladness of, it means blessed. It means joyful. And that's what we want to bring to you today. We want to bring to you some joy because um, when I introduce to you our guest today, uh, you're going to see the joy that fills them just to be able to be used by Hashem in the things that he's called us to, right? So, uh, and to be able to say yes to him and to be able to fulfill something, it's it's so rewarding. And I know it's a blessing to the kingdom. So I wanted to share something with you before uh, we go on and we, we call forth our guests today. Um, this was a, actually, it was a writing that I did this morning and, um, we have been in a, uh, a new place for about, um, five, six months and because there's being, um, repair done on our house. And so we're here in this new, new environment. And so it's almost become like after five or six months, it's almost becomes like home. Uh, so I wrote this and um, I just want to share it with you. It just reminds me of that state that he calls us to, the state of Ashray. No matter what season, no matter what he call, where we are, no matter what road we have to walk down, there is Ashray. There is that blessed state that we can rejoice in. So it says, when we moved in, Autumn was releasing her beautiful leaves and they were dropping and twirling like colorful little ballerinas. Then winter came and the forest be before us was bare, except for the evergreens. Now it's springtime and pollen covers everything. New leaves are budding, so nascent green, light and dark. Oh, the shapes that bring and they bring life to a sleeping forest that is being jostled to wakefulness by the warm temperatures, the rain and the sunshine. It all signals me to wakefulness. It's a new day, it's a new season. It's time to rise, shine and give God the glory. Put on your nascent new baby greens. Embrace the warm temperatures. Let the rain fall upon you, a few drops anyway, and smile at the sunshine. Seasons come and go, but the shifter of the seasons always was, always is, and always will be. Wow, if that is not enough to embrace your day and your season. And so we are in here, this season that's approaching is Pesach, it's Passover. And then after that, we have the counting of the Omer. Uh, and so God calls us to a new season. It's time for us to just arise and shine and give him the glory and embrace all that he has for us. And I, be, and I tell you, beloved, that's how we can walk in Ashrei. That's how we can call, walk in this blessed state that he's called us to. So I want to call um, our fellow writers because we have a lot to talk about today. And we have a, uh, I'm just going to add this to the stage. We have a, a new book and it is a devotional and it's entitled Grains of Promise, The Beauty of Barley and Wheat. 
And here are my fellow co collaborators. As you can see their names there, each one of them has been on the show before and you've met each one of them. You've had an opportunity to hear from them and you're going to hear from two of them today. And so we're just delighted in the conversation that we're going to have. Uh, so let's bring to the stage, we have Jackie Herndon. You have um, met her. She's an amazing writer and um, she's written uh, quite a few prayers for us. As a matter of fact, we're putting together a booklet actually of prayers that we have been massing, um, amassing actually over the last two years. And we're putting those together and she writes the most beautiful prayers, crafts them, I should say. And um, one of them, she wrote a couple of them about Israel and absolutely beautiful. And I know it touched the father's heart because our hearts were touched as well. And so thank you so much, Jackie, for being a fellow collaborator. And thank you so much for being on the show today. Absolutely. <laughs> and we're adding also Hope Crane. You've met her before. She's an amazing writer, um, a budding, nascent writer. That word is fitting for you, uh, Hope, as we uh, talk today. And um, Hope was with us uh, a couple of times. And of course, with uh, some fellow pilgrims and travelers to Israel uh, with the um, uh, Kingdom Impact Travel, Christian Travel Group that went to Israel uh, a couple of times this year and plans to go again. And she has such a heart, they both do for Israel and for Torah and for the things of God. And so it is a delight to have you on the show today. Uh, Thank you, Pastor Juanita. It's always so, so fun to be here. I just, it's just fun. <laughs> good, good. And I'm, I'm praying that everyone else who hears will, will enjoy uh, what we share today and have the same kind of fun that we're going to have, because I really had fun uh, writing this book. I think that uh, of all the publications we've done and we've worked on together, I believe that this one is just so powerful and so impactful. Um, I just want to tell the audience that, uh, let me see if, if we can just bring this forth. Um, okay, that may know it did work, there it is. So uh, I was thinking about uh, the counting of the Omer and this season that we're in of counting the Omer. And, um, I, I know it's all about the barley and the grain, right? The barley that begins the counting of the Omer and the wheat harvest that ends it. And so I just began to uh, take a look at the references to barley and wheat in the Bible and asked you guys to be a part of this. And you said yes. And just what the revelations that Hashem has given to you, um, just absolutely amazing. Absolutely love everything that was written. Um, and I had a chance to read them all. So that was such a joy. So I wanted to ask Hope first because Hope uh, shared a writing with me and she had gone to Israel and I wanted her to share uh, even the promptings behind that particular writing. But she shared it with me and she said, uh, what do you think of this? And I'm like, this is amazing. Let's use this as the foreword for our next book. So Hope, can you tell us about the, the genesis of that piece of writing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> we, we took a Kingdom Impact Christian Travel, took a small group of six on a mission trip. This was just, just, not quite two months since the war broke out and we couldn't stay home. We, we had to go uh, and just see what, what we could do. And in the face of that horrific devastation that had happened and our encounters with people, we, we went to a place that was housing some displaced families, helping uh, these children go through some type of uh, play therapy and art therapy. And 
there was a random conversation that happened with one of the, the gentlemen from the tour company. And he, he had, get, he got a text and he would all of a sudden his face lit up and he said, wow, I just heard that one of the kibbutzim ha has been able to get their wheat um, crop in the ground. Wow. And he wasn't actually, he wasn't really talking to me. I heard him say it and I turned around because I, I heard this and I went, wow, what, what, what is this about? Tell me. He said, there, we've been very concerned about our future agriculture, agricultural future here because of this war and the lack of, of human resources to help get these uh, crops in the ground. And he said, but but Beiri, it was Beiri, um, the kibbutz, they got their harvest in the ground. And he said, this is, this is good. Well, I, I didn't really, I didn't get it. I, I mean, like I went, okay, this is, this is good. You know, when I'm seeing the devastation to the families, I'm seeing that there's hostages that they don't know if they're going to get them. The, the time that we were there was during that one ceasefire when some, some hostages were, were released and we were hoping for more. And um, you could just sense the tension it, just in the atmosphere, just in the air and the, the grief and the, and the trauma. And he got excited about planting wheat. Well, I'm not a farmer. I didn't grow up on a farm. I'm a city girl. <laughs> and and I, I just got that like a seed planted in my heart and then as the time, as our, our, we were there uh, for you know, about 10 days. And as our time began to draw to a close and we were coming home and I'm, and that's germinating within me as to what the Lord is going to say to me about the importance of this crop. And um, so I came home and it just poured out onto the paper. Well, you're the writer I know, Pastor Juanita. You're the editor I know. I'm like, I'm going to send this to her. I'm not even really sure if I knew that this book was happening at that time. Um, and, I, and I just sent it to you because I know your heart for Israel. And Jackie and I have been to Israel together. And so, you know, the connection there is amazing. And uh, it just poured out onto the paper right from Ruach. It just came right out because I'm not, I've not been a writer, you know, so this isn't a thing I ever aspired to do. This is something that I feel he just dropped into my heart. And, um, yeah, it was, it was just a privilege to be at that place for all the reasons. And then to get that seed about the wheat and to be able to write it and, and put it, put these, uh, thoughts and heart and, and words on paper and yeah. see what, it, what it's going to do. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing that because number one, I don't think you knew that we were writing this book at the time. And I am just so blessed that this, this man was not talking to you, <laughs> but you like absorbed it. You picked it up. It connected with something in you and who knows I mean, only Hashem knew that 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 connection when that man dropped that seed and you picked it up, right? That now this would go into a greater seed, right? A greater harvest, a greater planting, if you will. And so I, I just love the way the Lord works like that. And so those of you who are listening, if you're overhearing something and you, you know, and we're not talking about eavesdropping or anything like that, but you know that this is a nugget from God. Don't dismiss it, right? Okay. There's something in it for you. So God just uses all kinds of ways to speak to us. And so thank you, Hope, for hearing that. So Jackie, when you read the, the forward or just hearing what uh, Hope uh, has just shared about the very genesis of it, what comes to your mind? Oh, the word hope. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're planting in the midst of this war and the sorrow and the grief and the unknown, but they're planting. Yeah. That's hope. That's faith. Yeah. Yes. And, and they're looking when they plant, 
They're looking, they're looking for the harvest. They're looking for the future. Yeah. So I, I, that's what it said to me when I read it. There's one line, uh, well, every line is amazing, Hope, that, but the line that you said, when now you take what they're doing there in the midst of wartime, which was, was real, right? And now for us, you said, will we, in the darkness of war, suffering, tragedy, or loss, have the faith to plant? That, that was so powerful to me. Look, every day we're dealing with difficult situations. And every day the Lord is saying, plant, 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 so, so, so. Every day he's saying that to us. And I, you know, if that is true, think about the many days that we didn't sow, that we didn't plant. But, you know, I hope I want to get to your surprise harvest because that was really, that was so key to what I'm, I'm sharing now. But yeah, um, those of you, this forward is amazing. It was um, the very genesis of it was there in, in the Holy Land. It was there amidst uh, tragedy and, and um, all the difficulty that Israel was going through, but the, but the Lord also in hope planted a seed and she was able to to uh, along with the holy spirit who waters right and gives or who in gives the increase uh to bring forth this seed so that was absolutely beautiful thank you so much hope and um so what do you think of it being the foreword uh in the book oh my i was i was honored and amazed and <laughs> Yeah, it was so, yeah. actually in a good way. <laughs> I mean, it was it was so on point to everything that we were discussing. So, yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, I wanted to ask each of you, which entry was the most exhilarating or thrilling for you to write? Which one? Um, and, and Hope, we'll start with you. Oh, OK, well, um, for me, it was unusual bread. Yeah. Of the Ezekiel bread. And, and the reason is because God has been so good to me. And as, as my healer, as my comfort in these dark times of my life, and to be able to share what he has brought me through on a larger stage, so to speak, you know, for it to, to be able to go out and for me to just honor him and what he's, you know, done for me uh, is what made that. So, you know, just precious, just precious to be able to share his goodness in my life. Yeah. And, and the way you take uh, what was going on in your life and all the difficulty with you and just connect it to that Ezekiel bread and the wheat. And it was just absolutely um, beautiful, very, very beautiful and encouraging as your writing is anyway. Uh, um, Jackie, what about you? Which one was most thrilling and exciting for you? Um, oh, well, I have two of them, but I'll, I'll share just the Shalom one. Yeah. And actually it's interesting because hope is here. And this really, the, the study on now faith, I don't know if you remember years ago, hope when you did that study on for us in the prayer group, okay. on now faith. <laughs> when I started to do this, that popped into my spirit and i remember just the flood of memories of what you said and and how we need to that very just even right now that very minute the very second the preciousness of it mm -hmm. and that is faith yeah. it's working even in that minute second yes so i i got excited writing that one. <laughs> yes, yes. What day was that, Jackie? Do you remember? That's and, day 25. Yes. And, and hope yours was the Ezekiel bread was day. Yes, we'll take a look at it. 33. Day, day 33. So for those of you who will get a copy of this book, and we pray that you do, we'll, you're, you're, you will be incredibly blessed. 
for me, it was actually the very last one. Uh, it was day 50, actually. Um, not only like, oh, yes, we're finished <laughs> with, uh, with all the writing, but it was this idea, reading the background, it's like, one day we're going to lament over the fact that we can't buy from Babylon, right? That, that th the world is going to lament that we can't. Why are we crying over that, that we can't buy her wheat when, when the kingdom has so much more for us? And it just shows us the deception that will occur at the end of the age it, it shows us how jaded we're going to be that we would weep over not being able to purchase anything from Babylon when we have all of the great commodities of the kingdom. And so that one I really poured my heart into because it brought me to like almost to tears. Lord, you mean this is going to happen, that we're going to be at this place, this deceived that we will weep over Babylon. And so all I could say was, and when I entitled it, burn Babylon, burn. <laughs> because in that whole passage in Revelation, it talks about how it will burn. But uh, my, uh, my um, sentiment was the same, let it burn. So, um, so mm -hmm. which one presented the greatest challenge to you? We'll start with hope again. Okay. <laughs> well, it would be day 21, substance and essence. And, you know, the genesis of that title was, uh, I have a friend who's gone on to be with the Lord and he had received, he'd received a word from the Lord and he shared it with me. And he, this is what he said. He said, we cannot worship the Lord with our essence if we won't honor him with our substance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so when I read, I read the scripture, I'm like, okay, I, how in the world, what, what am I going, what am I going to do with this? You know, what, what are you going to do with this Lord? And, um, and that's what he reminded me, drop those two words back into my spirit. And from, from that, this, this came, but uh, it was with a, it was with a lot of, uh, seeking yeah. you know it didn't happen immediately it was with a it was with a, a lot of seeking for me to to see what was what was the nuggets of of wisdom encouragement or truth that the lord wanted out of that scripture for this for this work yes i mean i mean it's it's again it's powerful thank you so much for sharing that jackie um mine would be day 24 satisfy and <laughs> ooh, for me, it was just the revelation of the attribute satisfy and the tangible presence of satisfy and, and being in that every moment and how even uh, in the sorrowful times and the really broken times, we are satisfied. We have satisfy in us. It's satisfying. Yes. So I can, if it sounds a little strange, be satisfied in the brokenness. Mm -hmm. He is good, so it's going to be good. Yes. Amen. Amen. How, however, it it is deemed by him to, to work out. It's going to be good. But I get to be satisfied. Yes. In that good. So that that yes. really seeped into my spirit. Yes, I know. In that one, you almost um, personified satisfy, which was very, very interesting and very clever. So, yeah, that was uh, amazing as well. So thank you so much for sharing. So I day one, day one for me. So it basically says in the scripture. Now, during the days of the wheat harvest, Reuben went out and found mandrakes in the field. So it's like, okay, that was all that was mentioned of the wheat harvest. And okay, he went out and found mandrakes. So you begin to do the study. So now you have to study, you have to seek, 
the Lord, what is this? Why the mention of the wheat harvest here? So as, as I'm seeking the Lord, he just unpacked something for me. And then to look historically at some of the commentators who said uh, that mandra mandrakes usually don't grow during the wheat harvest. I'm like, okay, Lord, so what are you saying? So it was during the wheat harvest that he goes and he finds the mandrakes. So just really seeking the Lord and finding out how to put it all together. And what is the point that you want the reader to know about this and to grow from it? Because that's that's the point behind each one of these is for us to grow, right? It's for us to see Hashem in a way we've not seen him before, right? Because there's beauty in each one of these scriptures. And, you know, as you've heard people say, there's a reason, you know, that the word that the words are there because pen and ink or, you know, using what they used at the time, writing this Torah, it was very expensive to do that. So uh, why this phrase? So it was very interesting, uh, just kind of delving into that and knowing then too, that it was number one, it was the day one, it was the first one to start off everything else. So that, that was great. So, yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about the counting of the Omer because this book is really designed for that. But those of you who are listening, it's not solely for the counting of the Omer. You can use it at any time of the year, any season of your life. You know, there are seasons that we go through and you want to see Hashem. And just looking at this idea of the harvest allows us to see that the planting and the sowing and the reaping and the harvesting and the bringing in the sheaves, you know, all of those uh, uh, symbols are mentioned because they should be, because this is how our lives are with Hashem. It's about the sowing and the planting and the reaping and the bringing in the sheaves and of course the harvesting. So I wanted to, to um, ask you something else. Um, um, what do you think of the title of the book? Now, I had this idea for a title and I had entitled the other books that we had done together. And I'm like, OK, let me spread the wealth and let me share this with the group and uh, to see what they would say. So each one was able to come up with three titles and you presented them. And so I tallied them all. And lo and behold, my three were not selected. I could not believe it. My three were not selected. <laughs> so um, so what do you think of this title? And as a matter of fact, I'm trying to remember it because I think it was your title uh, mostly, wasn't it, Jackie? I think it was. Yes, but go ahead. Um, Hope, what do you think of the title? Oh, I, I absolutely love it. Yeah, I absolutely. Absolutely love it. And um, I think that, you know, the reason why I love it is because I think when you when you put those two words together, grains and and promise yeah. they have a have a meaning. But what they mean together is uh, is intricate and complex and, and layered. And um, I, I almost feel like I could do just a study on those two words. <laughs> yes, yes, really, really. Um, I know we, there were, uh, we had like kernels and sheaves. We had becoming bread, uh, the giving grains, which was quite interesting. Uh, giving grain and then gifts of grain and then grains of wisdom of understanding, of promise, right? Grains of growth, harvesting, wisdom, understanding, promises, shalom, uh, uh, tales of barley and wheat, divine messages and grains of barley and wheat. So all of these were like presented. And so Jackie, what do you think of the title? Well, I, I didn't, Hmm, how can I say this? The grains of promise, I went, oh, okay. <laughs> but then, um, 
I think I overheard a conversation about the grains and I don't know if it was you speaking to someone, Pastor, but the person that you were speaking to was getting really excited like little grains, little grains, little grains of promise. And I went, Lord, that's what you give us every single day. Yeah. Well, I call them little nuggets, but hey, they're little grains too. <laughs> so I, I, it really hit me what the grains, the little, yeah. little tidbits that um, he gives us so freely. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and just that, you know, one of them was unless they were Yeshua said, unless a kernel of wheat is plant is planted, buried, it can't produce fruit. So just think of the promise within every grain. And if we look at the word of God, every scripture, every word, every olive bet, right? <laughs> As a grain, then there's so much promise within each one. It's the word of God. It's active. It's living. And so he wants us to uncover this. And I always say this because it just blessed me. Someone said, he didn't hide things from us. He hid them for us that we would search out the matter, right? And so when we begin to search, just like what you did, all of the writers did, it's like, oh, what am I going to do with this? And then we began to search things out. We began to do some research and um, we began to pray and seek the Lord. And so he gave us, uh, I believe, what we have here. He definitely gave us the wisdom of this. So um, I wanted to ask again, uh, so it, was there anything that you learned um, that you did not know before or anything that blessed you? Because I know we haven't really officially begun reading the book yet because we're going to start um, the night of the counting of the Omer, which is the always the uh, 16th, uh, the 15th uh, of Nisan, so, or the night of the second um second night of Passover. But anyway, so we're going to start officially reading it then. Um, but was there anything just even from your writing of it? Uh, Hope, we'll start with you. Absolutely. And you know what it is because you called me on the phone <laughs> oh, yes. and said, um, what do you mean by this? Explain this. What, what's, what are you going for for this? And so in that challenging one that I wrote on the um, substance and essence. Um, I had the privilege of being educated by our pastor here to, you know, really help me clarify. And I, and I love that. I absolutely love to learn. Yeah. And um, so I, you know, I definitely to learn some very, and, and I'm not, a, I'm not embarrassed to say some very basic education in, from Torah, um, which I'm, I've read, you know, I've read regularly, had just read it re really, um, the scriptures about the, about the priest offering the sacrifices. And then, and I totally missed it, totally missed it. And then you called me and said, um, you know, the priests aren't the ones who only do the sacrifices. Sometimes the people have to sacrifice their own you know, they have to kill their own sacrifice. And I was like, wow. Yes. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you so much. Because even in there, I learned a lot, I think, out of that particular entry. And thank you for helping me learn that. Yeah. No, it, your, your writing is just amazing, Hope. I, what can I say? I'm, you guys, thank you for the collaboration. Uh, Jackie, what about you? Sorry. For me, um, I I think I was in a wash of tears reading the foreword because you know with Jackson, my grandson, and just the the planting, even in the midst of everything that was happening, is the amount of faith. Yeah. In that is it's overwhelming. 
and um I want that much faith, you know? Yeah, yeah. When, okay. when you think of that, that the excitement of we get to plant, we get, we get to plant. Even with all that's going on, we get to do that. And we get to do that every single day, no matter where we're at, especially where we're at. Yeah. We get to plant. I mean. And the rest yeah. is up to him, right? Yes. We yes. get to plant. We get to get in there and be right alongside him. So. Yeah. Well, actually, because um, I read every one of them, everyone was just eye opening. And even to the point of having to go back and look at some things and do some research and like, wow, I didn't think of that. Let me let me delve into that a little bit more. So that was uh that was good for me. That was good for me. So I just so appreciate what you guys brought to this publication right here. You brought such wisdom and experience. And I love the fact that um, that uh, your spirit of excellence was there. It's like, I'm not going to just be satisfied for surface level, right? I want to dig deep and I want to find out what's inside that grain <laughs> so that it can be a promise, right? To those who read it and they will mm -hmm. desire to read it. So yes, um, I do want to mention, first of all, um, as we go, the in the back of the book, I had words from the author and I'm just going to see if I could, uh, I'll, I'll remove this. Um, actually, and let's see if I can, uh, I had not, um, let's see if it's there. All right. Uh, I want to, uh, bring this up. It may not be in the best possible way, but I wanted to bring it up here and just share it with everybody. Now, um, there are several writers that are not that could not be with us today and so we just give you a shout out and thank you for all that you did but uh in the back of the book i wanted this time to share with the writers how much they have blessed me right so i said um and let me just uh it's here i'm just going to add it this way um it is tiny but we'll we'll make do so I am so blessed to be able to collaborate with amazing writers, some who did not even know they were writers. And so thank you, Hope Crane. Your writing is tender and hopeful. I want you to see what she says, and this she says in day 29. And, and the, it is entitled The Surprise Harvest. A surprise harvest comes from secret seed a hidden attitude, unforgiveness, shameful self-indulgence, critical words, or ungodly actions, just to name a few. Every action, every word, and even every intent is a seed. Wow. We get a surprise harvest when we are blind to what we are planting. Is that powerful <laughs> Uh, I'm reading this and I'm like, that is absolutely amazing. Guys, we, I, I want, if I plant wheat, I want a wheat harvest, right? Because you're going to get whatever you plant. And that's what she's saying here. It's like, there, it, there's an intent. Uh, every intent is a seed. Everything that comes out of the heart is a seed. And we just need to be careful what we're planting. So it's just so tender, just the way, and she, the way she further develops that and unpacks that. So I'm just encouraging you to get a copy of this so that you can finish the reading because you're going to be blessed. And then we have uh, Nelson Noriega. His writing is so fatherly and healing. And he always comes up with these beautiful prayers at the end of uh, his entries. And so in day seven, he says, Father, forgive me when I put myself down as useless chaff, occupying space in life out of fear of the hurtful attacks from the enemy. Help me to see myself as you see me, 
Let the sanctification process burn away the worthless chaff that fills my life. Purify me by the work of your Holy Spirit. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Just fatherly, just healing that after you've read his passage, then you get this healing balm at the end of his entry. And all of his entries have that um, same kind of um, same, same kind of spirit, if you will. Uh, and then Jill, Jill, her writing is so insightful and encouraging. And she says this in day four. Have you ever noticed the lifestyle of the Jewish Orthodox and how they go to such extremes, not to be away, uh, only to be away from sin, but also, or as I'm sure it should say, not only to be away from sin, but also to be kept from the smallest chance of temptation. We are to protect ourselves as well from the risk of temptation by clinging to the seat seat, the tassels of his Yeshua's talit, his four cornered garment. These things remind us of Torah being fixed on him and his word is the safest position in which we can reside. Mm -hmm. Loving obedience, scripture, prayer, worship, acts of obedience, conversation about him and a heart beaming with thankfulness. All and more are our reasonable service and this leads us deeper into his joy. So every time she shares, it's like she gives you something practical to do, right? In the midst of uh, this insight that she brings from the Jewish scriptures. So you will be so blessed uh, by her entries as well. And then here's uh, Jackie, her writing. Thank you, Jackie. Your writing is inspirational and passionate. She says, do you know that you wonderfully and fearfully made have a goblet and you have to go back and take a look at the scripture because she pulls from the song of solomon here you have a deep intimate place of communion that god doesn't want empty dry or lacking in this goblet your repentance and yeshua's blood as the final sacrifice becomes the wine that is now located in the very core of you, his blood, his life within you. But wait, the verse also says, may your goblet not lack mixed wine. Now you're going to have to get the book to find out what is she talking about? Well, where is she going to go with this? This mixed wine and this goblet, what is being spoken about here? And you'll see it's so passionate. Her, her writing is so passionate, so fervent, and so inspirational. And you'll be blessed by it. And Carol, she's just genuine. And her writing is just eye-opening. Uh, she uses these, she's got these great metaphors. And she can take a, um, a symbol and just kind of build upon that. And so she says, and she's writing about the time when uh, Rav Shaul is on the boat and the boat sinks, you know, it crashes on the shore and they have to throw out the wheat. They have to throw the wheat overboard. And so she says, so they cast off the wheat into the raging chaotic sea. They did so to salvage the one thing they believed that would save them. But even that last earthly vessel of security would hit a sandbar and be caught between two colliding currents. And now they would have to toss their own bodies like the wheat into the turmoil. They would forsake all hope for man-made help and find the God of their salvation by arriving on land. <laughs> I'm telling you, beloved, you have to get a copy of this. Each one is so amazing. So what do you guys think of those excerpts? Hope, what did you think? <laughs> wow. I, I know, right? want to read ahead. You know what I'm saying? Now I want to read ahead. <laughs> of course, I know. I know. So just start all over again when you get to counting the Omer. God's going to show you something else in there that you missed the first time. So. Yeah. Yeah, so Jackie, what what did you think? 
Well, I, you know me, I got the book right away. I know. I said, no, no word, okay. I'll be really, really good and wait. I only have to wait another few days before we get to start. So, but yes, this, the, the description of the writers is, yes. I'm yeah. On point, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, the descriptions are so on point uh, because you guys, um, uh, you know, you epitomize those words in your in in who you are actually, and in your writing. So, thank you so much. Thank you again. I can't thank you enough um, because I really do feel that the Lord's he, he was His hand was upon every publication. But you know how it is with Him. It's like you know you know how they said with Jacob's ladder, every rung goes higher and higher and higher, and that's what I see in the writings that, that we've done. So um, any final words that you all want to say about the book? Because we do want to take a look at the Parsha in, for just a few minutes in the few minutes that we have remaining. Well, Pastor Juanita, I have a question for you. How long has this book been in the works? How long have you and the Lord and the writers been working on this book? Yes, yes. That's a good question because actually we started in um January 2023 so I sent it out to everyone and um they said okay I'll do this many or I'll do I'll write about these and then for some reason as it normally happens time got away from us and so we were not able to put this publication out for the counting of the Omer in 2023 so at the, I think it was toward the end of the year, uh, probably in the fall, I reached out to everyone again. I'm like, okay, we're going to do it this time. Um, uh, I'm going to uh, send you what you have written because some of them had actually written their entries and sent me their copies. So I had those and I said, so I sent out a list saying, okay, these, um, these you committed to, are you still committed for 2024 and everybody committed. And then I ran into hope and I think I was telling hope about uh, what we were doing or uh, either that, or you came to me with your foreword. And, um, and I know that you knew that we had written uh, devotionals before. And so you asked to be a part of the project and I'm like, yes, by all means. So yeah, so it's been over a year over a year that we have had been working on it. So mm -hmm. what do you think of that? I, you know, I think God's timing, right? His timing. Uh, and, and it wasn't obviously meant for 23. It was meant for 24. Yeah. And, um, and it's exciting to be in his timing, yeah. you know, always in his timing. And, um, and I'm looking forward to see what the impact that this book is going to have you know, on me. And of course, you know, I always, it's, it's amazing that my family doesn't buy a book. They, they, they want mom to buy the book and give it to them. So I just buy all the books and mail it to them in the country where they are. And, uh, but I'm excited to see what the Lord's going to do with this book. Yeah. Uh, some of it I'll get to know and some of it I won't because people will read it that, that we don't know. Yeah. Um, Yes. But it's exciting to see because it's got to be special, especially meant for this time when it didn't happen when you thought it would happen. So, yeah. you know, uh, actually, um, so included in this book, we have, of course, your foreword that speaks of October 7th. And at the time that we were working on the book originally in January 2023, of course, that had not occurred. And then um, I think several of us were able to even incorporate uh, that event and some of the things that we were writing uh, additionally, you know, um, not just a foreword, but in some of the entries as well. So, and then I remember Carol saying, oh, I've got to change some things because the price has gone up because she did something about the wheat and the, the price of it and so forth. So uh, yeah, yeah, God's timing is perfect timing. Yeah, we just, we just rest in that. Uh, Jackie, any final words before? Uh, I, just, I just agree, the timing, it's a timing thing. I had even, I had started on all five of them, but we got, 
as you said, involved in other things. And when I look back on them, I went, mm, these are for now. Yeah. These are for now. They weren't for yeah. back then. Yeah. So it's, it's, he's so good with the timing. Yeah. yeah. The, this season, time. the seasons he brings us through. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> so uh, our Parsha, because we always want to talk about our Parsha, it is Tazria and it means conceived uh, and it takes, um, it involves Leviticus 12 and Leviticus 13. And it's about um, the woman who gives birth, who gives birth. And it's also about the Mitzorah. Um, we call him a leper, but it is a little different from a leper. Uh, this Mitzorah now who has a skin disease. So we'll just hear uh, from um, Hope. Uh, we're like, we have about eight minutes, ladies. <laughs> well, for me, um, having done, having had a health issue, having had several health issues, um, and I'm amazed that, that the Lord's mitzvahs are not only for our spiritual good. To be a spiritual book, this book is very practical. And science finally catches up to it eventually. Um, and just to, to know that God gave these commands that could seem burdensome. You got to count these days and count those days and you can't do this and don't touch that. And, but the heart of it is of a loving father who says, this is for your good. Yeah. You know, this is for your, it's for your health. And he wanted his people to endure. He had a plan for all of, all of his people to endure, they had to preserve the word and they had to bring forth Messiah. Yeah. And this was his point. And he's, in order to do that, you have to survive. You have to be healthy. You know, you have to, you have to be able to bear your children healthy and, and raise them healthy. And that's what I get out of all of these, all of these mitzvahs on, uh, mitzvahs on, on these things that can seem I'm going to just have to use the word burdensome. You know, it just, it feels like it's hard sometimes to, for them to keep all these, but there was a reason and just trusting the Lord when you don't know the, the reasons. Now people want to know everything, right? Science, this and science that, and it proves this and that. And, and without any of that, just trust the Lord because okay. his ways are good. Amen. They're for our good. Amen. Jackie. Yeah, so um, on the ninth, because I, I keep a journal, as you know, everybody knows I keep a journal. <laughs> um, the ninth, I, I wrote something because the word examine kept jumping out at me. Examine, examine. What, what really does that mean? Mm -hmm. So I did a, just a little bit of a word study. Thank you, Hope, because you introduced me to that. Um, and I the word way kept coming up. And uh, weights and balances. So, of course, I looked up the scriptures for that. But I wrote this um, on the night after I did a little bit of study. Um, I said, I keep seeing the word examine. In this parsha, the Kohanim examined the one infected because the one infected has willingly gone to the Kohanim for help and direction. Isn't that what happens when we surrender to Yeshua? He then comes close to examine the source of our decisions to determine how they will be handled and the process of cleansing. This is repentance and the receiving of our Savior to the fullest. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Um, my uh, What I extracted was a little similar as well. Um, you know, the priest, because you're right, the priest came up in the, the, with the woman uh, and came up with the Mitzora. So the, the Kohen was like very, very central. And I just thought of that three-legged stool that is the, the, the governance of uh, ancient Israel, which was, you know, the prophet, priest, and king. And so here we have the priest now uh, mediating. And it even says that when this woman goes to the priest, he can make atonement for her, which is really, really very powerful. But the, I thought the interesting thing is that this woman was giving birth. She was giving birth and she, was, she had to bring sacrifices, not because she had sinned, because 
that it was not a sin. She was actually carrying out uh, the commandments, right? To be fruitful and multiply. But there was something, There's un, God has deemed that emissions from the body, you know, um, with semen and, and um, uh, blood, that they are, you're unclean. And so, but it has nothing to do with sin. And so there's a state that we that we are in and it's an uncleanness and we go to the priest and the priest can make atonement for us, even in that, you know, sometimes, but when we look at the Mitzorah, the Mitzorah, the rabbis will tell you that he is, he has a skin disease because he did sin. Because there was something Lashon Hara, something he spoke, something, something that came out of his heart that caused this, as we can see in, in uh, as it's further developed. So, for just the uncleanness, right? There's an answer, the priest, who can do, bring us atonement, and for sin, there's an answer. You know, we go to the priest. He examines Jackie, as you said. He checks us out and we go through the ritual. There's a ritual that um, the Mitzorah has to go through. We, in the, in the same sense, as you were saying with Yeshua, we get to, what's the ritual? It is forgive me, right? You make amends to the ones that you have hurt. You, you go to him. He forgives you, he cleanses you, and we, we move forward. So all of this has to do with this idea of unclean, unclean just because of it's a natural state, right? It's a natural state. And then unclean because we have sinned. But guess what? There's an answer for each one of them, right? And it is the Kohen. It is the priest. Amen, amen. So any other thoughts? So, yeah, so thank you all once again uh, for being here. And we just want to put this up. Let's do this again before we say goodbye. There it is, Grains of Promise. You can get it on Amazon.com. And um, if you know these ladies, they will sign them for you. Or this gentleman who's with us, uh, Nelson, they will sign these for you and um, you're just going to be blessed. I'm telling you, I was truly blessed because I have read every one of them and I plan on at the night of the first night of the Omer, I will be reading again. And this time I will be really seeking the Lord on what he wants to say to me as I read and praying that you will do the same. So ladies, thank you so much. God bless you. And uh, I know you're looking forward to the next project. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Pastor Juanita. It's an honor to be included. Thank you. It's an honor to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. It's an honor as well to be a part of this and, um, you know, a part of our community. Amen. Amen. God bless. Amen. Amen. That was awesome. And so I think we'd better say shalom. We are richly blessed to bring you what we believe is the fullest, most diverse, yet up-to-date progressive teachings, discussion, and prayer programming you can find anywhere on this planet. Be sure to take the tour of the MessianicLambRadio.com website. I'm Susan Hoogie, thanking you for joining us on the Messianic Lamb Video Network. <laughs>